Hey, y'all, this is Dr. Mug Simpson. Just had a hell of a interview and sit down with Real Life Street Stars. Y'all make sure y'all go check that out. Run it up. We, we turning it up. We, li we lit. We live. And it's local. Let's get it on. Real life street stars. Yeah. Let's go. We got a momentous occasion right now, man. We got a real story, man. Um, we got uh, goddamn yep. from Jacka, Jack boy turned yep. jeweler, man. We got mug in this building, man. Yes, sir. Uh, blessings for you to come on this couch. Blessings on you to give us your story. Nah, um, you. There are some people that sit here might have seen you out and about, and some celebrities, uh, you know, on their snaps. You that guy in the corner when it comes to that jewelry. Anybody yeah. iced out, you that part of that guy in the corner yeah. that's, you know, standing over their shoulder, just clarifying that, make sure, make sure it's hidden right. Yeah, you got to make sure it's right, And man. you came in right yourself, yeah, uh, yes, look, sir. looking, looking luxurious. Thanks, thanks to our manufacturers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So let's go and go through that, man, because um, your story is uh, really an epic one, man, in which you came from trials and tribulations yeah. uh, to climb your way out of this situation organically. Right. Yeah. Uh, you did not clout your way up in this. Uh, you got it organically. You got it out the mud. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, you know, even your name. Right. Uh, how does your name, how does one get that moniker? How does one get that name, first and foremost? Well, like, we, you know, it, it comes from a lot of different things. I'm from a, a segment in Fort Worth called uh, Meadowbrook. And uh, on a little click, it was called Meadowbrook Underground. So we put M-U-G together. You get what I'm saying? Me and my yeah. homeboy, rest in peace, D-K. Uh, we put a click together and we was rapping, freestyling like uh, Swisher House and all them. And uh, we we was doing grills and everything. So we called it Mug, M-U-G. Yeah. And uh, with me being one of the leaders and all that, I took on the moniker because I got it tatted in my head. Nah, it's on like, you. Uh, this was like 1999. Yeah, I mm. got this tatted in my head in 99. And I thought yeah. it was, uh, you know, because you kept mugging everybody like. Yeah, I mean, well. <laughs> well that's 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 my story, but it, it all fit. That's what we was, you know. So me being a uh a uh a, a, a church boy, you know, I grew up in the church. That's how I, I moved to uh Fort Worth, Texas from Steubenville, Ohio when I was four years old. My dad moved with the church, so we all came down here to Texas. And uh just growing up in the church, you know, you uh you get shielded from a lot of things but we were never shielded because our family was really that you get what i'm saying so we believed in the power of god we just watched it and everything and then by the time i was 12 you know something hit my family you know crack uh epidemic hit my family you know what i'm saying with with my dad and it made me like your dad actually was uh, a minister yeah he was a minister no i'm saying he actually actually was doing crack man i seen my nigga uh hit the pipe fuck me up like you, when you, you, you walked, what, how old were you? I was 12 years old. You walked in on him? Walked in on him. He's sitting on the bed in his, uh, in his, he, he worked at American Airlines. So we was well off. <clears throat> I walk in, see my boy hit a pipe. I was like, whoa. And it messed me up and it made me realize like, this shit really real. You know, you knew, we, you knew what crack, you knew what crack was to a T at that time. You knew what it was. Yeah, I knew what it was, but I didn't know where it came from. That's how shelter we were. Uh huh. How did that affect y'all uh, family effort? So I got three younger brothers and we all like stair step. So, you know, I'm like, they, they OG, they listen to me. I remember one time he, it, it spells, you get what I'm saying? It spells, they go on spells and it, it's almost every time they get paid. They, they go on the bins, they leave, you know what I'm saying? You don't see them. So I, you know, I'm trying to uh, console my brothers one night. And we in the room, and they're like, man, we ain't seen that. We ain't hope so many. I'm like, man, well, I hope he did so we could be done with this. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't got to keep going through this. We ain't got to keep worrying about this. And then, you know, it'll be all over for him. You know what I mean? So that's how I was consoling them by let's, let's get this over with so we can. Because I, I was on the part of, man, he making us look bad. Yeah, so let me ask you, how bad did it get? Like, what was there an instance where you're like, whoa, what the fuck? Man, I'm talking about so the big thing is my dad is a is a hustler. Mm. So he he found out legal ways, like that's why 
out as a jeweler because we ain't no dummies. We know how to get, out there and get it. He had us knocking on the doors, addresses on people's curb, putting the address on the curb. That's real, yeah. Right? That's, that's legit hustle. Legit city hustle. curb service. He had us with a script. We knock on the door. Uh, uh, this is city curb service. We here to help keep kids off of drugs and off the streets. I had my homeboy, Slick Nick. He was running with me back then. We were about 12, 13, and that's how we all got the gift of gab. We would run up to houses, knocking on doors just to get that 10. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But what, what my partner didn't know is that I don't get my 10. He's smoking my 10 up. Oh, wow. You get what I'm saying? We don't know what's really going on at the time. You get what I mean? Damn. But we find out all this, and what was crazy is... So he basically stealing from you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. Oh, yeah. Like, bikes coming up missing. Uh, uh... What was it back then? Super Nintendo. Oh, coming up missing? Say, gone? Oh, gone. Did you like, question it? Like, where, come home where one day, the big screen gone. Remember with the big oh, screen? Oh, yeah, the big, the big, yeah, yeah the sit on the floor. The big screen gone, and it, it is just what it y'all is. Y'all didn't question it, just y'all just knew what it was. So one day, this 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 is a story, I'm going to just get out of my dad because I love that yeah, nigga. Yeah, I know. We man. love dad at the end of the day, but that nigga, this is he, testimony right here. Man, he done made it back. He he just bought 12 ounces of gold, you know, flipping gold. <laughs> right, shout out to Yeah, 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 yeah. He on it. So uh, this, this did it one day. He come home from American Airlines one day and my mama like, my mama gangster. My mama is the real gangster. That's how we are who we are. And she say, uh, hey man, we gotta get these kids some shoes for school. So I know you got paid. He like, I ain't got paid yet, Trace. I ain't got paid. He make one step in his whole, he didn't cash his check and everything. His whole night fall out of his pocket. And all I could think about was fumble. Like, cause you know, we played Pee Wee football. We were very privileged. So when I seen the knot fall out of his pocket, I dove on it. Yeah. Yeah, we getting shoes today. So, and I remember when you, when George, they was the Space Jams. Yeah, we had the Space Jam. We went oh, back yeah, to- uh, Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, 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 Shared Elementary. Yeah. yeah. Square um, business. You know, uh, just listen to you talk. I wanted to share a story, you know. I remember one time, uh, my father, we was in the hood playing and we found a hundred dollars on the ground, me and mm-hmm. my brothers. And we excited. We was like, oh shit. I don't, we done ran back to the crib. I'm like, daddy, look, daddy, look, I found a hundred dollars on the ground. He snatched it out of my hand like, boy. <laughs> He's like, and don't tell nobody. <laughs> right, 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 right. And look, 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 look. And you know, of course back then I'm like, damn. And I didn't know, I didn't know what it was, but I'm like, when everything starts to unfold, you start to see like, what it really is, you're like, oh, that's what my, you know what I'm saying? I was excited because I thought, you know, toy or something, video game, something. What's crazy, man, is it, it broke my heart, bro. Like, it broke my heart because I really believed in what they was teaching us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So to see him fall like that over, uh, you know, getting freaked out with females, you know, that's how it go. You know, you, you get turned on to different things by, you know, that, yeah, that type of thing. So... He came home from Atlanta trying to find it and got robbed on the South side in Fort Worth. You get what I'm saying? And that that's how we knew what was really going on. I want to know, you know, a lot of times when you're growing up with that, it becomes like a generational curse. Right. How were you able to come up out of that? How was you able to beat that, come up out of that? I didn't beat it. See, that's the cold part. We didn't beat it. Me and my brothers, we didn't beat it. Uh, we became it. That's what I'm gonna have. Yeah, like How I did it shape you. I got this? tattoos all on my head, and I, you know, come up in the church. Like I ain't supposed to look like this. I ain't supposed to be like this. But this is what happens when uh, God uses evil to come out good. You get what I'm saying? So for you yourself, um, you know, you see this, you know, evil in mm-hmm. your house. Like you said, it kind of consumed you and your brothers. Um, uh, at what age did you start like either not caring or just getting too right it? then? Right then, right then, I took off. I, I'm, I'm curious because we you know we all have kids. You know, we all are fathers here, and we always wonder, you know, how do we raise our kids and what do we show them? And you know, they try to mimic us. And I always feel like if you're not worried about your parent, if your kids aren't worried about how the parents look at things, then your mm-hmm. kids are lost. If they don't care, like, oh, I have no consequence. My my parents don't care, whatever. So did that kind of shape you? Where your dad, you just feel like, ah, right, he don't care what the fuck I'm doing. Mama working. Uh, I wasn't dumb. I'm out here. I wasn't dumb. He used to like, before all this happened, like he was brilliant. Like we had everything. And like he was re- real hard on me about thinking. Like he would just dry ask me, what you thinking? And I 
really on the cool. I that's know what I'm shit. thinking. Yeah. yeah that's real. I know what I'm thinking, but I ain't I don't want to tell you. And you know, I get hit upside the head if I say I ain't thinking nothing, because nigga, you lying. Nigga, you yeah. be dead if you ain't thinking nothing. You ain't brain dead. What you thinking? Mm. You get what I'm saying? So I'm very analytical. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So when I seen the church wasn't it, I jumped off the porch like crazy. What was it about the church that wasn't it? Shoot, my dad smoking crack. Oh, you like y'all can't even save him. Yeah, he's smoking crack. And he was a minister. Yeah, he was a minister. So this is why we in Texas. Man. <laughs> nah, that's real. You get what I'm saying? Nah, that could that can make and you lose now faith. A I'm little in bit. a position where I ain't got no OGs or no uncles or no big cousins. Uh, I don't got none of that. Man. See, that's what's so, you know, wild about, you know, my story. I don't have any you of that. You can't lean on nobody above. Guess you. what I was leaning on? Uh, the word of God. Oh. That you can do all things, but I was manipulating the word of God to do anything I said I was going to do. Oh, wow. Like, I'm going to break in this house. Like, if I said it, I had to do it. Man. Yeah, I, I believed in the power and principles of, of the church when I went into the street. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, I don't know how to cook dope or sell dope. And I'm really an enemy of it because I seen what it did do did to my family. Yeah. So my only way in the game was to go back into the enemy's camp. I heard this in, in church. I heard the preacher yeah. say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go back into the enemy's Translated camp. Translated all the way different. You, 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 you take it back. So I was taking it back. So that's where the name Jack, well, not saying the name, but the uh the, the, career, the career of Monica yeah, being yeah, a jack boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a homeboy. Did you oh, did you feel righteous taking it from dope boys? No, well, I, don't get me wrong. I wasn't really jacking no dope boys. Okay, okay. Yeah, I wasn't on no jacking no dope boys or nothing like that, doing all that. But we did kick those and all okay. that. My thing was the jewelry game. I was really hitting these jewelry stores like I'm, I'm in the books. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so and because again, you know, we from your history to becoming a jeweler yourself, you always knew jewelry was the way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What, so you were fascinated with jewelry, I'm I was, assuming. Man, I'm very fascinated with jewelry. What co what caused that? Like what like what was that? Do you remember what made your fascination? I, I, I kind of do, and it's like, okay, this is is where you know the young mind is influenced. Yeah. So looking up to everybody, looking up to the pastor, he he lied. He got the Porsche. He got the nice tailor made clothes. Mm. He got the the big Rolex on, you know what I'm saying? The big ring, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you got other people in the game like the Doughboys, they live. Yeah. Then, you know, so that's what we see. So we all look at status. So we try to live up to status. And I knew at the time that I couldn't afford it. And I didn't know how to hustle to get it so I can take it because I believe I can get it. So let's just talk about that right there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's again, we're going through testimony right now. Right. Uh, what was your way or method of taking it? Okay. So at first, we we was some damn fools. Like me and my partners, we was uh, looking up to one of his cousins. And uh, they turned us on to the lick where, you know, you get the CD players out. You bust oh, the I remember them days. The oh, I remember them days. You get what I'm saying? God yeah, you, you bust the... These, yeah. these, New these, Jersey Drive. These, these, these called licks. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? We hitting licks. Because we trying to get these joys, we trying to do that, we trying to live up with the Joneses, all that type of stuff. Yeah. We buying cutlasses and regals. Yeah. You know, them was five, no more than a thousand dollars. Yeah, eight hundred dollars. So we, we try to, you know, we getting these CD players and we doing all this, and and that was our leak. And uh, one of my uh, bigger partners, bigger homies, he was like ten years older than us. We had got locked up on uh, a lick spree one time. And he, I called him on, on my uh, free call, like, hey, man, come buy me out. He tell me the only way I'm going to buy you out is if you step your game up. Oh, damn. He gave you ultimatum. Yeah. Put you on that shook night. Only way I'm going to buy you out is if you step your game up. I got the money at home to pay. Like, that's what's crazy. Like Yeah, like, I got it. I just don't got nobody. Damn. I got my mama. You get what I'm saying? My mama ain't trying to hear Bro, nothing. We ain't calling mama yet. She a holy roller still. Back then, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Even when my old man was going through what he was going through, she still stayed down. You get what I'm saying? 
So it was me and my brothers by ourselves, fending for ourselves. So once I got out, gave him his money, and he told me the game, he was like, look, man, you're doing some petty shit. You're doing petty shit like the next time you do that, you're going to prison, bro. And that's just what it is, or you can step your game up and change your life and do something different. So I'm listening to him, and uh, he showed me the lick where you walk into a predominantly known jewelry store, you know they have insurance. Yeah. So what you do is you, it's the finesse game now. You know, we had the little curls back then and we were rock, rocking the Gucci chain. I mean, the Gucci watch, the G watch back then. Yeah. And a uh, pocket full of money. And I walk in it. Well, you had to wait till it was a rainy day because you know, they got the buzz door. Yes. They got the buzz door. The thing is when you go in there and you get whatever you get on a rainy day, you can run right out because the door is not locked. And you don't sell a Rolex every day. A free game. You get what I'm saying? They keep the doors well, it's unlocked. old game. I, old game, it's I know. so much old game. But like if you they did kept the doors today, unlocked. There. Yeah, they kept the doors unlocked yeah, on rainy days. They kept the doors unlocked on rainy days because you don't sell a Rolex every day. And if somebody's trying to get in, let them in. It's raining outside. So you would look at the weather. We look at the weather. Wow. Well, th this is a, a older cat. Yeah. They put my, you on. Pulling yeah. my coattail like, bro, you ain't got nobody to show you the ropes. You finna get locked up for a repeat offender on some petty theft, hitting leaks, stealing CD players out of cars and systems and speakers and amps. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes some rims. Oh man, the funniest thing, man. <laughs> Talk to us. <laughs> so, y'all, y'all remember uh Minister Society? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So uh me and my partners, we see this sunfire. Y'all remember the Pontiac Sunfire? Yeah. He had some roasters on it. Yeah. Some 13. Yeah, yeah, roasters, yeah, some, nah. Some 13 sevens, right? And uh, I got a grand down that's sitting up. Yeah. And I'm telling my partner, like, that's me. So this is my first time jacking somebody, right? Yeah. So I'm like, man, we gotta, we gotta get that, man. He was in Taco Bueno, and we followed him to up the street. And he got out in these apartments. And me and my partner ran down on him. I said, break yourself and everything. I like <laughs> break yourself. Oh, he in the movies now. <laughs> I, swear, I said, break yourself and everything. He he spooked. He give me the taco bueno, give me his keys and everything. <laughs> he go right in the house, right? It's a stick. Oh I don't know how to do it. Stick. Stick. <laughs> so I gotta get out the car and run to my partner car. He's like, what you doing? I can't drive a stick. Nigga, I can't drive a stick. You idiot. And I'm like, man, I can't drive a stick. So the next day we come back, I say, you know, we 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 he got that shock, that real shock, because his car was factory. His car was factory. You know, I, I kind of like it, it it showed me, you know, like what could really happen. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I ain't I ain't really like how I, I could have did something to that guy that could have down there took his life. So I kind of stayed off of that. Like I'm 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 knowledgeable, right? So I got this little uh Robin Hood thing in my mind. Like I'm stealing from the hood. You get what I'm saying? So that's what made me be able to jump into the jury game like that. So the part where it came, his cousin, he didn't want to give up. This shit. Right. Shit he gave a shit. Shit he of, like, what what would you have done in that scenario? Being a jack boy, right? And the nigga don't want to give you the shit. What are you going to do to a nigga? Look, man. I got a lick down the street, bro. I'm broke, too. I got a way bigger lick than you fucking with me. Let's come together and let's get some real money. Okay. That's what I did. <laughs> So oh oh God. Like I'm gonna tell you, like, bro, you 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 barking up the wrong tree. Yeah. We the same thing. Did you ever come across somebody that wasn't going? No, nah, you gotta know you gotta know how to work the steel. Yeah. Like, Everybody going. <laughs> Everybody going in some way. So back the jewelry store, rainy days. Right, rainy days. So this is my first time doing this. He tells us, like, hey man, like. You got to do it on a rainy day. Uh, you go in there, you look good, you look the part, and it's all finesse game. They're going to give you everything. So I walk in, I got my money, and I'm telling him, like, yeah, man, I got this Gucci watch. I'm tired of it, man. I'm ready to upgrade. 
and he showed me the Rolex. I take the Rolex, I put it on. And I'm like, man, how I'm gonna buy myself a Rolex, take my knot out of my pocket? How I'm gonna, it probably was like $500 probably, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it looked real big. So I, I take my knot out of my pocket. I'm like, how I'm gonna buy me one and don't buy my mama one? Let me see that other one right there. So he grabbed the other watch. When he give it to me, I tell him, I say, you gotta go. So I'm back out the door. He like, he just looking at me. I'm like, I'm gone, man. He don't move. He don't do nothing. The reason this man don't move or chase me is because if he chased me out the door, the insurance don't cover the merchandise mm. because the insurance don't guarantee that they can save your life. Yeah. So what they do is they know they're insured. They just sold two watches. Mm. That's a, hey, that's you a big thing. I went and got a BMW convertible. I did the food, went back to Meadowbrook. We we turned up. So uh, another right before yeah. that, you you got off two Rolexes, right? Um, and you walked out. Like, walked hey, I'm, out. I'm I'm done. I'm done. Who do you sell it to? Right. Who do you sell it to? So so my partner, this this story is so loud. My partner, he uh, you know, he older. He know what's going on. He he loving that I'm a. I'll do anything. Right. Crash. If he, if he say it, he gonna do it. That's what they know about me. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I got yeah. the Napoleon complex. I just figured out that word. It ain't short man no more. <laughs> Napoleon complex. So I'm going to do anything I say I'm going to do. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. he knew that about me. And he knew other jewelers. So what we did is we drove up on another jewelry store. He went in. I sat in the car, of course. He came back out. I think he gave me like uh, five bands. You know what I'm saying? He came up. Yeah, he came all the way up. He, he, came gave, up. he gave me like five minutes, like, yeah, we just gonna split. I got a good 10, you know what I'm saying? I listened to him. He took me to the auction. I got a, uh, 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 it was a burned up 325 1991 BMW with the convertible top. Got that, it was burned up on the inside. I took it to the uh, uh, upholstery shop, got it gutted out. I think I'll probably come out of spending like $2,000 on it. So now I gotta hit a lick. And now, I'm like, fuck the rain. <laughs> you, 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 you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck the rain. I'm going to look for me a watch and I'm going to find me a watch. So I'm looking at like, and like, I just look at dudes wrists. Like it was them old white guys. Mm. So watches was your game. Yeah. Like they easy. Mm. They're going to come up off their watch. You get what I'm saying? That's facts. They're going to come up off their watch. And nine times out of 10, when we ain't know back then, they, they, it's insured. It's insured. Damn. So how much uh I would say how much knowing your knowing what you know now as far mm -hmm. as how Rollies cost and things, how much money would you say you were able to get up get up? We got off over, of uh I myself got over three hundred thousand dollars worth of uh Rolexes. Damn. That was my first uh felony charge. Oh, they theft hit you 20, with that number. Yeah, theft twenty thousand to a hundred thousand. And like so I'm gonna build that build up to that. So now I need some more money. You know what I'm saying? I bought some, you remember when Nietzsche's was out? Yeah, yeah. Got me some 17s. This is when the 17s was the biggest. You know what I'm saying? So I got some 17 inch Nietzsche's and you know, I'm trying to stay up, keep up with the uh, times and my partners is hustlers. They selling weed. They, you know, they doing their thing. I'm a go get it. Yeah. So I got to hit a lick. I got to find the next lick for my money run out. So I took it up on myself. I'm going to start looking for Rolexes myself and cut him out. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking for watches. I'm looking for watches. And I find a couple. I go to one jewelry store. No, not a jewelry store, a pawn shop. I go to, a, it's over seven years, so I can talk about it. Yeah. I go to Cash America, go in there, ask for the watch. He ain't trying to give me the watch. I'm like, let me see the watch, bro. Let me check out the watch. He ain't trying to give me the watch. And I'm understanding, okay, this is a pawn shop. So I take my nine out, like, give me the watch. Like, I ain't playing. He, oh, 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 man, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'm in my partner, uh, photo white colors. Yeah. So I done borrowed his car. He don't know what I'm doing. Oh, shit. <laughs> he don't know what I'm doing. Oh, shit. Sudden, I done borrowed my nigga car. And it's like, so we probably, at this point, we probably going half on something. And I, I got to have my end of the other of the play. Yeah. So yeah. I got to hurry up and go do something. That's what, that's what a go-getter is. So I went to go hit that lick. And what was crazy, at the end getting locked up, I never got caught for this case. 
Like they never brought it up on me, never, never uh uh charged me with it. And what was crazy, I showed I sold it to the hood barber. Oh, RIP the shot. All right. Shot about the watch, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I was able to get my end of the bargain. But the crazy thing is, is when I start finding other watches, the other guy that turned me on started turning other guys on. Uh, he only started paying them a thousand a watch. So they uh, going crazy in the city, hidden, hidden stores, doing all this. And uh, one time I went to a store in uh, downtown Fort Worth called Polito's Jewels. Shout out Alicio. Okay. And uh, I go in his store mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm casing his store. I know he sell Rolexes. I'm casing his store. He's showing me the Rolexes. He's showing me all this. And I'm like, dang. I see in the corner of my eye, he got a Mac 11 hanging on the wall. And some tell me, like, this nigga ain't got insurance. <laughs> that insurance is that Mac 11. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Put two and two together. I put two and two together like that insurance, that Mac 11, he going to tear something up. So I tell him, i like, man, I get these watches all the time. He was like, for real? I was like, yeah, I get these all the time. He opened up the wholesale book to me. He was like, yeah, I'll show you right here. If you bring this watch, I'll give you this for it. If you bring this watch, I'll give you this for it. So he's showing you the, the, the numbers now. I'm seeing 12,000. <sighs> I'm seeing 18,000. I'm seeing 30,000 if you bring this one. So now I know what watch to go get. Yeah. So I'm going to go get these watches for him. And he paying. Oh, man. Like, this is my first time just really. How, how old were you at this time? I'm um 17 years old. Are you tatted up? Like, are you, you like you nah, are now? I'm, I look you like. You still look uh, clean. The 50, 50 cents tattoos. Like, yeah. I got the cross right here. Got the tiger on my chest. Yeah, yeah. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, we simple. Just, simple. Simple. But yeah, we I was getting tatted back then like crazy too. 17 walking 17. And you did you ever run up in any malls or anything like that? Well, see, that's what my partners was doing. They were doing dumb shit. Yeah. Like yeah. they hitting the uh the kiosks <laughs> for the ropes and shit. Like, bro, that ain't shit, that's nigga. The, yes, you know what I'm saying? So wow. Here you go another story. So it's about 10 of us. It's 10 niggas, right? It's some bloods and some crits, right? And 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 you know. I just call myself, I'm a wannabe crit. You know what I'm saying? I, I wanted to be so bad that I became and, right. and, and, and made it that and repped that and it was whatever. You, you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Never got jumped in or nothing like nah. that. Just, nigga, Started I'm this. Started my own shit and, yeah. and meant that and repped it. You get what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, uh, we all come together. They like, man, mug, you got to show us how to do this shit. You got to show us how to do this. So I'm like, all right. I remember the first place we went to sell the watch. Let's hit his ass. Let's go in there and get all the watches. You hit the nigga that you sold it the to first the first time? To. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I know where the watch is at. Like, I want to tell this story so much. Like, I, I, I'm ready to act it out. Like, this was so, like, this shit was crazy, bro. So, we in four different cars. We planned it out. Like, we got to go in different cars. When youngster. Uh, Jakari, when you when you when you bust the door open, you hold it open, you don't move. Uh, uh, Dominique, when you go in, you so big and ugly, nigga. You gonna make the nigga not move, and you gonna hold him down. Jr. This, that, and the next. Y'all go in here and dress. So y'all y'all go with the bags. As I bust the glass, y'all gonna get all the jewelry. Man, straight Grand Theft Auto. Jakari, the youngster, he get the door open. He holding the door open. The next thing to go in is is my boy Dominique. This, this is my nigga too. He go in and come run out and say, he got a gun. So? <laughs> you got a gun. Right, nigga. So? Get in there, nigga. So he running, he making everybody else run. But me and JR, we ain't hearing this shit. Like, yeah. we going in, bro. This in here. When we get in there, we busting everything up. Everything put up. Oh. So I'm running back to the safe, right? And I hit the safe. And like I tell everybody in these stories, like we was cutthroat. We love each other to death. But if we hit the lick and I get in the house first and I find the stash or whatnot, this is for me. Yeah, you I did the I, Treasure it, hunt, nigga. It's 10 of us. Like, <laughs> see, nigga, this for me, nigga. I ain't playing with this shit. So look, this is the craziest shit. When we leave out, I get, I get, the, I get the safe. 
get some money out to save. When we leave out, everybody in four different cars. The uh, he then turned the siren on. It started pouring down rain with the sun out. Mm-hmm. It started pouring down rain, and we leaving. And when we leaving, we see the police coming. Right? Yeah, it's a movie. So the ideas always be live. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, it's a movie right here. They 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 passing us. So I know we we green, we good. Right. So it's a little it's a little bar. Dominique pulled over to the bar. Everybody else pulled over. I'm like, I'm asking DK, like, what the fuck they doing, man? Like, they pull it over for real. Everybody pull over. Be like, we finna go rob this. Oh, another one. I'm like, y'all finna do what? We finna go rob this. So they run in there. And I go in the door, and I'm just standing in the door, and I'm looking at these niggas. These niggas body slamming these people. Oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> Trying shit. to get the money, and I'm like, these niggas crazy. They done took the register. Oh, this a movie. This a little hole in the wall, little barn type of bar. And I'm like, wow, this shit fucking me up. Like, <laughs> Side mission. Shit. Say, bro, we just fucked off a, a, a hundred thousand dollar lick and y'all doing yeah. this. God. So man. we go to the hood. Everybody get back to the hood and we all ante and up. These niggas had like $57 from the um from the uh the second lick. God damn. I had three thousand dollars. Now let you know. I ain't tell nobody nothing. I had three thousand dollars, and it was like, wow, y'all like y'all don't get it. Do you credit you know yourself as being a mastermind of these heists? Like, I really, God, well, I'm the mastermind of everything. Yeah, I really pulled some heist off. I'm the mastermind of everything, man. Every everything basically, man, it come from my mind. But like that, that's all I can. So you saw you myself. saw it before you did it, like the plan you already seen, right? The reaction of the owner, right. everybody, right. God, man. Right. There you go, shit. So like uh, that happened, we got out of that. Long story short, I end up getting picked up one day and, and find out. Real quick, before you got picked up, how often do you do these heists or these jacks? How often did you, were you were you out there? Like maybe like two two times a month. Two times every two weeks, yeah, bi weekly. Yeah, yeah, we spending money like crazy. Man, that's yeah, real. we spending money. That's right. What was y'all spending money on? Like. Rims, uh, paint, you know, just like dumb shit. Oh, like, yeah. oh, y'all like to pull up on each other to yeah. show who, oh, oh look what I'm on. Thing. The club scene was was big back then. Yeah, Lakeside. The point, you know where I was stunting at in Dallas? The Spy Club. Oh, yeah, shout out to Spy Club. Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah. Wednesday night, you know, somebody gonna pop up. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we were stunting. Like, shout we were GG. trying to stunt. We were trying to stunt. All right, so you were about to say you, it, it all came to a head. So, like I told y'all, like the the big homie had commissioned other dudes. He was paying thousand dollars, a thousand dollars to watch. God damn! It had got so bad to where when you walk up in the jewelry store now, even today, they ask you for your ID. Yes, they do. We the reason, because these niggas running up in every store, tearing every store up because they only getting a thousand dollars. Were you working in Fort Worth and working your way out or how far were you? Do you travel out first and then don't do nothing in your, don't we, do no dirt we, in your city? I See, that's what it is. You get so desperate that you'll do it next door. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> well, we it's see you as a regular, shit. we see you at McDonald's, nigga. <laughs> shit, okay. You get okay. what I'm saying? <laughs> and see, back then though, ain't no cameras, ain't no technology, ain't none of that. That's why I say that's old game. Cause this, t- today, yeah. you couldn't do none of this shit. Know. Yeah, you couldn't do none of this. So y'all didn't ever think about, you know, we're gonna put our money together, get some some weed or something like. Well, like like I said, they like you know they were selling weed, no. selling weed. I'm I'm I'm. Uh, but it ain't as it ain't as lucrative as this. Yeah, this this free money. Yeah, free no over no overhead. You get what I'm saying? So Not I got everybody ready to stop selling dope. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? To, to hit one of these licks and we good. You know, everybody trying to hit diamond leaks. You know, this when the bling bling and everything was just now coming out. So we trying to be cash money and all that. No limit and all that. But uh, one guy, he do a pawn shop. He go to the pawn shop. He get the watch. He leave the pawn shop and he let a civilian follow him home. He was on uh, Pioneer Parkway in Arkansas, in Arlington. I know exactly what it is. Goddamn, <laughs> I know first, exactly what it is. First, first pawn, first cash. Yeah, he let a he let a civilian follow him. Follow him all the way home. Fuck, bro. To like Mansfield. Damn, you're supposed yeah. to be what? Yeah, 
Like, you know, we damn fools. Like, we 17. Like, I think he was younger than that. So what happened was, youngster get caught at the house. When he go in the house, the police surround his house, get him out there and arrest him. They take him down because they trying to find the ringleader. Yeah, of course. Right? Of course. So of course they tell on he tell on the ringleader. Damn. The so ringleader tell quick. on me. Wait, wait, wait. So he folded. He young. I'm assuming he young. Right, yeah, he young. He, he young. Yeah, I'm he still him. in high school. So he tell on the OG nigga. Year. Ringleader, he tell on the OG nigga. Mm-hmm. The OG nigga points you. Yeah, this, this him. This who y'all looking for. <laughs> Damn. The OG who put you on. Who put me on. Who called you and told you, I need you to step your game up. Right. Told you. Told on you. Right. Damn. Watch this. So he told on me. Uh, one night, I'm at my T-Jones house because, you know, my uncle, I think it was a spot club night. My uncle was with, uh, man, I want to call his name, Skip Cheatham, back in the day. And, and they used to all kick it together. So... I link with him on Wednesday nights to go to the club. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that Thursday morning, police knocking on my door, on my mama's door. I'm in the in the garage. We got a garage made into a, half of it into a room. My mama don't know I'm here. So the police knocking on the door like, hey, we looking for Shane. That's my government name, Shane Gray. We looking for Shane Gray. He involved in a uh in a in a in a in a, in a uh murder over a BMW. In a murder over a BMW, damn. Right. Ain't got nothing to do with that. They trying to scare my mama yeah. to see if he really here. Oh, yeah, I don't know what y'all got going on. Y'all gonna have to find him on it, on your own. He don't live here. Oh, I shout out mama. Me. Mama gangster. Yeah, she don't know I'm in here, though. Yeah. Oh, That's oh, the thing. Yeah. She don't know I'm in here. So my my baby brother, E, he come, he come to me like, oh, they out there, they out there. So I get up and I get in the car that's in the garage in the back seat on the floor. Police coming there. I see him with the flashlight on my brother. They like, your brother here? You tell him we looking for him. And 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 we heard he armed with danger. So this this and that, right? I'm in the in the trunk. I mean, not in the trunk, but in the back seat. Police leave. I get out the back seat. I go in there with my mama. She said, "Boy, you was here. I'd have told him you was in there. <laughs> you got these people coming to my house looking Damn. like this. I'd have told him your ass was right in there." And I'm like, dang, why would you do that? You know, I ain't, I ain't wanted for no murder or nothing like that. That's my car. I paid for that. So seeing that I was wanted, I, I was on the run for a while. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For for, for those of the, because we always talk about what does on the run mean? What 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 kind of on the run was you? Oh, man. Because some niggas, one nigga said, I just didn't go outside during the day. Right. <laughs> so you don't want to drive. I don't want to be behind the driver's seat if we ever get pulled over. You 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 wait till nightfall to go out. You yeah. get what I'm saying? You try, you don't have an ID. Yeah. You don't, don't keep, keep an ID. Don't keep ID on. Yeah. Don't keep an ID on you, and you just you should, you stay under the radar. Always wear your sneakers. All that. You, you stay under the radar. You feel me? So that's what I was on it, and and uh, by the time I had got caught, we get down there, and I find out everybody done flipped on me. I'm the ringleader. They they all got out. Everybody got probation, and <clears throat> they trying to give me 10 years. Wait, wait, hold on, wait. Real quick before they offer you the plea. What are your thoughts on that when you see every... This is back in the 90s or late yeah, 90s? Yeah, this, 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 this 99, 2000. All right, what are your thoughts when there's this no snitching rule that was supposed to have been law? What, did y'all? Did you ever expect that? Like, did anybody ever talk about, hey, if we get caught, we ain't telling on nothing? Like, see, that's the thing. We never had a... Camaraderie. Oh, okay, okay. So, like yeah. we Everybody, wasn't every man together for no way. So it's get off on the next man. No one amongst who, these. Who, what fucked me up was the OG. That's really fucked up. Yeah, like you, you told on me how I found out was my lawyer. Ah, oh, the paper. My lawyer. Paper. So I go to I go to court, and my lawyer like, man, look, you in the newspaper for going back to school as as tailback, and you in here on this, this, that, and the next, and and can you get some money to get out? And I'm like, I call him my cousin. And I tell my lawyer, like, can you call my cousin the one who bought me out the first time? He's like, I hate to tell you, that's the one who's telling on you. Oh my God. Oh my. I'll be lost. You get what I'm saying? Man, that's boozy. the one who's telling on you. So let us stray. When I got out, I, I really wasn't on no mission to like harm him or do nothing oh, to him. I, I really couldn't say- believe it. 
I was like, you, did you start laying down law? No. I, I ain't gonna lie, I respected the man because he showed me a lot, but I really couldn't believe that, that that's what was really going on. So I really didn't believe it. I seen his name and all that, but I really didn't believe it was going down like that. Damn. You get what I'm saying? So what happened to save me from getting a 10 year sentence to a three year sentence, Polito's Jewelers bought all the watches back. Oh. That's how I ended so up getting. You had watches on you? No. Oh. So this the game. So every watch that I had took to Elicio, he had sold to powerful people. Judges, lawyers, doctors. All these people don't want that attached to their name. Ah, this So they the brought game. the watches back. Oh, this is. Elicio, go ahead. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and keep it, man. Go ahead and turn it back in, man. They, they want their watches, man. Don't worry about nothing. You get what I'm saying? Damn. So we got all the watches back and Alicio gave it over to the court system. And that's what made them give me three years non-ad. Okay, yeah, that's On real. that case. Did, did you ever wear a watch on you? Did you ever like- Yeah, I always had a Rolex. Okay, okay. I always had a Rolex. And um, when I got out, that's who really just showed me the game. He was like, man, you can do way much better than this. Cause I went to go show my gratitude yeah. to Alicio for making that happen for me. I did two years on a three year sentence. And uh, got out, was was on a mission, um, got out, thanked uh, Alicio for doing what he did. He was like, man, you can figure this out. You can do this. Yeah. Went to barber college yeah. because I was looking for a trade. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, You're I'm a fella now. Yeah. So I don't have a high school diploma. I got my GED. So uh, I'm looking for a trade. I get into barber college. And as I'm in barber college, I run across a dude from New York. We call him Styles. And uh, I don't know if a lot of people know Nub from the West Side. He started coming to school as well. He had just got his grill done. And he was like, yeah, I went to H-Town. I went to the H, I got my teeth done in the H. We going back out there next month. So I'm ready to go get me a four piece. Mm. You get what I'm, I think the four piece was like 600 back then. Yeah. I can't wait to go get me a four piece. By the time I'm ready to go, we, we about to go to Houston, New York came back from New York with a grill. I'm like, nigga, where you get that shit from? Yeah. Oh, this Mike on Fulton Street. So my mind is like, hey man, you ask Mike if he'll do my grill. He give me the number. Mike say, as long as y'all get us the impressions, we'll do your grills. Come on now. So it was a number of, of, of guys that I was involved with and like, just like me now, I'm always trying to put people on. Yeah. You get what I'm saying with the play? Hey, this is the play. We about to start doing these grills. So all these niggas, we, we all here and we about to do these grills. And we take over the whole Metroplex by doing gold grills Man, in 2000. On. Like we just, it, it went stupid. I'm gonna ask you about that that uh, segment right there, but mm -hmm. before that, you did the two years out of the three. Right. How was that time for you? Was it was it a breeze? Was it, it was a hard time? Was it okay? Okay. Ain't nobody gonna tell you this shit. Ain't nobody gonna tell you this shit like this, man. And y'all got me out there. Come I on, think that go. that little. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I'm good. Y'all yeah, got go. me. Let's so, go. Uh, a lot of gang. Chain gang. Oh, chain shit. gang. I'm 17 years old. On that. I'm 18. I, I was in the county at 17. I got to the to the to to prison, 18. And you know the chain gang, you leaving from the county, you you chained to another nigga. Modern day slavery. You shackled up from from the ankles to the to the wrist and your waist. And uh you got like a men on a, horses, a, a moo moo on. Oh damn. And you ain't got shit on up under here, and you connected to another nigga. Damn. damn. So we on this bus ride out here in this bluebird, and it's just anxiety like a motherfucker. Like, you know, you hear all the stories like, you know, it's, when you get off the bus, you know what it is. And, you know, you in the county and in the county, you know, the OGs trying to get you ready because they know where you're going. Yeah. So it's always like you trying to prepare for this first day in. Like, and my shout out my brother E3. He like, uh, man, fuck first day out. I want to hear what a nigga went through first, first day, day in. in. You nah, hear me? Really. So that's what we working on first day in. My first day in, bro, you get out the bus and these, these, these white men 
It's just screaming and spit flying out their mouth. And you mine and this my this my flow and you don't do this and you don't do that. You you don't even look the next way and stand up. Get get closer to each other. Now, mind you, they done took these moo-moos off of us. Yeah. So we ass naked out here, ass man. Naked. <laughs> God. Ass naked. All kind of niggas we ass naked out here. And it's like, damn. And they like, dick the ass. Nuts the, yeah, and all that shit. And I'm like, God damn, it's driving me crazy. This thing I noticed, I'm like, come on, come on, mug. I know you ain't pissing on yourself. Damn. My nuts were sweating. Man. My nuts were sweating, bro. Like, I had beads of sweat. Like, like just like, nigga, what the fuck is we Man. in? And all I could think about was Ruth. Damn. That's all my mind could think about with Ruth. Like, nigga, we in slavery like a motherfucker. We That's out of there. <laughs> I'm Toby. Fuck it. I'm Toby. Oh, you said I'm I'm gonna conform. You ain't got to beat the shit out of me. I'm Toby. So I became Officer Barber. You know what I'm saying? I'm cutting the war in her and shit. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I was a smart motherfucker. Like, I ain't finna go to the field. You knew you only had you, you knew you had three years. Yeah. So you know like, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get out this. Bitch. I'm gonna drive a Cadillac. Yeah, I'm young. Yeah. I'm gonna get back to these women. I'm gonna get back to life. So when I seen roots, you only get treated like that by bucking the system. Yeah, basically. Like, nah, I only do. I'm only let, doing three years. Yeah, that's it. Let's let's get along with this. Let's go on, get out. And see, that's that's what one of my counselors told me. They say, as long as you got boundaries, you do good. So you got you but got. As soon as you can do what the fuck you want to do, you gonna fuck up. They put you out uh, on good behavior. Uh, you got a well. Know. Yeah, I got a I got a uh, FI three R. That that's a three three month program, ninety day program. I think the program was called Changes back then. Yeah. Do a ninety day program and you get out on on the good good behavior type of thing. Ooh, man. But what's cr crazy about that is a racer ride jump out two weeks before it, it's time for me to, to get out. And you see the whole thing unfold like. Where are you stationed, by the way? I'm in, in I'm in uh, Kilgore, Texas at the time. OK. Yeah. On Bradshaw State Jail. I know exactly where you were. Yeah, at. Bradshaw State Jail, rock and roll. Like it, 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 it's really its own little entity. Damn. Yeah. Race so, ride breakout. Yeah. So a race ride, right? And the cold part about it is you see it unfolding and you know you can't be no hoe. Ain't no I'm going home. I'm trying to go home because now it's it's like detrimental yeah. to how we stand together. How what was, we, yeah, what was he what was you doing during this? Right. Time? How we linked together and all that. Long story short, white boy didn't want to clean up after late night wreck. He the SSI. And we got a tank boss, this old ass nigga. He real old and he just talks shit all the time. He go get the white boy out the bunk, like get your bitch ass up and clean up. White boy say he ain't cleaning up. So old school go lace up. He put his shoes on and uh, he go over to the white boy and kind of drag him out the bunk. White boy get out the bunk. He go get the cleaning supplies. He cleaning up. <clears throat> you know, all us, we back there in the back, we riding this late night rack, it's the weekend, we riding, you know what I'm saying, we in the world, we on Rosedale somewhere, Miller somewhere, you know, just riding. And uh, see the white boy, I'm peeping the white boy, he going to air, air white boy bump. And it looked like, you know, they getting up and they getting ready. As soon as you know, they done jumped up and they done kicked it off. It's a whole ride going on, right? So we 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 into a black and white ride and we fighting and we dropping shit and we running around this bitch and we doing the fool. You got like, it's just like this. You got like maybe five minutes before they get down there with the cameras, right? Yeah. So they get all the officers and they come down there with the cameras and it's like big windows where they can see in. So they videotaping. What I did is I ran to the front of the window so I could be seen in the video. Smart man. Right? Smart man. So the white boy chased me to the front and he just swinging on me and I'm just like dodging and weaving and dodging and weaving and they come in and they lock us up, they gas us and everything. And we go down to, uh, they call it control. 
where they, you know, give the cases and they about to give you your case and all that. And they got me in there. It's like, well, Greg, we can't charge you with nothing. They like, what you mean? It was like your weed game was 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 impeccable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. You Talk didn't to touch him. that man. That man was trying to knock your head you off. You ain't touched that man. So you knew the cameras were there. Like, I knew they was there. Come on, man. So I, I got up out of there on that. And it's like, in my life, I always be able to look back and see where God like really blessed my game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And made it out of that. And what's sad to say is when I got out, it made me a, a, a more of a beast. Uh, you say what, like criminal activity? Or oh, man, it was... It was up. Yeah, you learned a lot. I'm sure, you learned you, a lot. You learned so much. You learned so like, much that you got to put it to... A smart man was like, I got to put this to you. You get what I'm saying? God and it's crazy. Damn. And back then, you know, technology wasn't like it was. <laughs> so I'm out and, and we doing grills. We 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 open up 303 Mile. Yeah, we got some yeah. partners who go to Big T. Yeah. And that's where I kind of like... It's a Swisher House era. Yeah, this is Swisher House era. Grills yeah. all day. I didn't know Paul Wall was white. I'm listening yeah, to him. Yeah, we thought he meant to get a black or something. And I'm listening to him. I'm like, dang. Yeah, I remember the day. I'm asking my brother, like, Rod, who is this nigga? He said, oh, no, nah, that's a white boy, Paul Wall, white. I'm like, hell no. Nah. Yeah. But yeah, we we on all that. And uh, I just became worse and worse. You get what I'm saying? So now we hitting the essays. Mm. We in the dope spots. You get what I'm saying? We getting dope. Yeah, no, it ain't about watches no more. It ain't about Rolex. Yeah, yeah, we getting dope now. We getting big dope. Uh, we hitting these niggas and they looking for shame. And one day, a nigga come looking for shame and I'm in there. Mm. He don't know who Shane is. Like, nigga, I'm Shane. I'm Shane. You Shane? Nah. Yeah, I'm Shane, bro. You want to holler at me? Let's go outside. These niggas huge. And I'm telling you, the only thing to give me this type of uh, response to people is knowing that greater is he inside of me. Damn. You, you get what I'm saying? And that's kind of weird, but that's how I was brought up and I used them principles. You get what I'm saying? So I was able to always meet any approach, however they came. You get what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, I'm saying. He was like, oh. Uh. So I ain't going to tell him, tell on him on camera, but he told on who told him that I did it. Mm. And we did it together. Damn. Once again. <laughs> Once again. And it's like, wow, you ain't gonna throw me up under the bus like that? Shit. Nigga, they ain't gonna fuck with you. They don't know who you is. And so they, we, they always wiggle their way out of it because we partners and we love each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, now I see a lot of my partners got whole ass shit in them. You know what I'm saying? And I, I start seeing like, Damn, I got some hypocrite in me too. Damn, I'm kind of fucked up too. How the fuck you 100% real, nigga? Ain't nobody 100%. Hey. I might be, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 60 40. Okay, that's, 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 that's pretty midi. Hey, I'm that's real about 60% of the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it real. I'm about real by 60% of the time. I might do something that's out of line. You know what I'm saying, and 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 that's just who we are. You seen your partner like like I'm a I'm a I'm a get him, and he don't he won't see it coming. That's how we was. Yeah, like oh, oh you are oh, you lacking like that? that? That's how that's how we was. <laughs> got him, he lacking, got him, and and it, that's how a lot of licks happen. And I was involved in licks that I shouldn't have been involved in because I was thinking about that lick, and now they hitting the lick, so I got to go with them on the lick. <laughs> I'm not for real. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, bro, that's my leak. Yeah, like, nigga. Yeah. You were the Genesis on. So it, it's like, you know, that that's what that's what my corruption was just taking. You know what I'm saying? And uh that's that's basically what I'm what I'm on right now is just just for a different cause. It's like we don't understand that they they what was the transition? Um was there like a final lick? Oh, okay. Watch this. So, you got 24 karat gold, right? Yeah. I ain't got 24 karat gold on. I don't know a lot of niggas who got 24 karat gold on. How much is a gram of 24 karat gold? A gram of 24 karat gold today is like $64. It change every day. Yeah. It's, uh, what you do is you go to uh, spot price of gold today. When you go to Google 
and it'll tell you what the price is today. Right. It changes, it goes up spot price. It changes and goes up. That's not what it, it may be sold for retail, right? but it's what the value of gold is today, right? So nine times out of 10, a lot of us start out with 10 karat gold, right? Sometimes eight. Sometimes eight. Sometimes eight karat gold because this is the game. But 24 karat gold is 100% gold. We buying 40% gold or 30% gold, right? That's when I start seeing it, that that's, that shit kind of odd, right? So what y'all doing with the 24 karat gold? Y'all busting it down. You're going to cut it. You're going to blow it up. You're going to put... Put some Cairo in it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to put something in it. And what they call that is, the legal word for the cut is called alloys. Different alloys they put in the gold to stretch it. And it's legal to have 10 karat gold because it's 47%. Right up under 47%, they make it illegal. So they've turned the jury game into the dope game on us. Could you explain a bonded chain? One more time. A bonded chain. A bonded chain. Yes. When you say bonded, I, I, I really don't know what you mean. Well, I once at a time I purchased what was referred to as a bonded chain. Oh, and now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's lingo. It's lingo. It's not really a bonded chain. They make up anything that sound good to sell you what may be not true to what they're saying. Right. Right. And they make up all kind of ways to not tell the truth. You get what I'm saying? Bonded gold. Right. What they trying to say is it's dipped. Um, but they don't want to tell you dipped because you're smart enough it. to know if I say dip, he he, I'm going to lose this sale. So they come up with a better word. Like the, 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 the funniest one to me is VS quality. Yeah. Quality. That's the key word. Quality. Mm -hmm. So you telling me that this ain't a VS because now you're telling me it's like the quality of it. So it got to be under that. It's a S S I with VS quality. And the quality is the color. Mm -hmm. That's what we don't, they don't tell us this type of stuff. But yeah, when I start figuring out all this type of stuff, I start understanding like, this is the real game that we supposed to be in. And my thing is that I'm here just, you know, let the people know the real. Like, let you know the real knowledge. Like, I asked one of my partners, how many carats of diamonds you got? You didn't even know? He was like, huh? <laughs> what? It's 10 carats. Nigga, diamonds. Not the gold. How, how many carats of diamonds do you get? And it ain't his fault he don't know. You know what I'm saying? They don't know the note. So we've been getting messed over for years with this jury. You know what I'm saying? So I come in the game to give a bre breath of fresh air on, like, what is re what it really is. And, you know, they really laugh at us. You buy a $20,000 Rolex, gold Rolex, and you go buy some v VBS diamonds and you bust your watch down. Broke it. Soon as you bust your watch down, you took that $20,000 all the way to 7,500 because you did something to this watch that wasn't organic, that wasn't authentic. It didn't come like this. So now when you resell it, see, that's what the value is, the resale value. That's what value is all about, what you can resell it for. You can't resell this to nobody with no money. You can only sell it to a nigga that look like you. Right. And you can't sell it for what you bought it for. Because when we go to these stores, it's 100% markup. And that's legal. You like, Whatever you buy in, the, in, the, in jury wholesale, you can sell it for 100 times that. And that's legal. You get what I'm saying? So we don't know none of these things. Go ahead. I was gonna say, how did you attain this knowledge? Because for a long time, what it just feels like black people were locked out of jury. Yeah, we are. I stayed down. You gotta stay down. And it, it's it's a certain thing that you learn. So, you know, my story kind of crazy, you know what I'm saying? So once I start trying to find God again, I start understanding humility. Right. And humility was something I ain't have, like, couldn't nobody tell me shit. Like, nigga, I how you gonna tell me? So once I start learning humility, 
The reason we don't know is because we we walk in there like we know. How much for this? Twenty thousand. That 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 I got that I got that right here. That's that's play money. That's shoe money. You get what I'm saying? And you don't understand that 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 was twelve thousand dollars. But you don't care because you in the game to you know get this like this, get this like that. And I remember one time when I got out off that two-year sentence, I had got broke off of trying not to do nothing, right? Trying not to go to prison, trying not to go back to prison, all that. Broke again. So the store that we keep robbing that we never really got, this, 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 this white girl that I'm about to tell you about, Amanda, Shout out Amanda. Amanda, the realest nigga I ever known. Like square business. So we broke and uh, me and a couple of partners at the house and they trying to hype me up like, mug, we know you know licks. We ready, we ready. Let's go hit something. So I'm like, we gonna run to that one that we ain't never got the right way. We gonna really get it this time. So the long story short is that Amanda is going to go in with this broke Rolex that I got. I got a broke female's Rolex. So I'm sending her in there to get the door open. Right? A white girl. She got a broken Rolex. She about to go in the store to get the door open. And when she come out, she going to come out when everybody's out of the store. You don't come out of this store till everybody's out of the store. So we waiting. And we waiting. And we waiting. And we waiting. And one of my partners is like, man, let's just go in. Let's just go in. So we waited on a client to come out. Client come out the door. I ran to try to get the door and it slipped on me and it locked. So with the commotion, you know, they know what we own. So I had like a, uh, I had a 22 rifle, something stupid. That's how broke we was. I got a 22 rifle and I'm hitting the door with the rifle and I finally break it. It's like right up under the bottom. My homeboy run up under the door and I run up under the door. The reason why Amanda ain't come out is because they didn't put all the jury up. Ain't no jury in the cases. So she's scared to death. She knows she can't come out because we gonna come in. So she's trying to stay in there. So we get in there and it ain't the grandson. The grandson was scary. The one I was able to jump up on and get the safe and still do everything. The granddaddy was there today. And the granddaddy wasn't here and he had a 357. And uh, I remember my homeboy getting under the door and I got under the door with him and he pulled his gun. And when he pulled his gun, I took one of the stools and threw it at him. And as soon as I threw it at him, the gun went off, but he, his shot went up. So my partner was able to get out the door. And as I'm going to the door, he coming down on me and I had just made it out the door. The whole time, Amanda in the store. Amanda says she peed on herself and everything. But she got took to interrogation. I ain't say nothing. Yeah. A white girl. I ain't say nothing. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? And I done been snitched on a few times. The white girl ain't say nothing. And I see her all the time. We still see each other and I just go crazy when I see her. That's my girl. That's my girl. You a real G. And everybody be like, dang, Amanda, you did all that? Yeah. Shane was crazy as hell. That nigga was crazy, but I was just trying to, you know, make some money. Well, now we've passed all that. Yeah, we passed all that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we haven't passed that. Okay, there, back, back. <laughs> there was an incident where, where you were shot. Yeah. Can you take, take us to that? Oh, man. The, and it, it wasn't by a nigga. Nah. It was by the, by the police. By the police, man. Damn. Yeah. So <clears throat> at this point, we big now. Like we got like rappers. We trying to rap. Shout out to Slick Nick and Ja. Cause they told us when we went, we were just going to they, they first studio in 303 Mall back in the day. And uh, next one studios. And uh, I was just taking a couple of my partners and my partner DK, he was bringing a couple of his. And you know, these niggas was freestyling on some switcher house shit. You know, so uh, we got in the studio and they was really challenging each other by wrecking the whole track. 
So we had got a record label. John had told us, man, you better go get a, a DBA. You better go do this. That's the first time we did that. That's where Meadowbrook Underground Records came from. So we was doing all that then. Then we was co-telling a lot of Switch House people, you know, just getting in the mix, being in the mix, doing a lot of different things. And now it come time back for the go-getter in me. You know, I'm not the hustler. I'm the go-getter. So we didn't came, y'all know the, the Wookiees. Yeah. They had just came out. Yeah. Like yep. the, the Jordans, like yeah. they just came out. So me and my partner, we didn't, I had drove all the way to Chicago one time trying to buy some fake Jordans and understood that I was about to get booby trapped to go pick them up to get raw. And I just left that whole lick alone. But in trying to figure it out, this when the when the internet first started jumping, the uh uh we 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 was Google not Googling, I don't, I don't what was it back then? Searching, was it Google? It wasn't Google back in 2000, Yahoo. bro. Yahoo. Yahoo. And we was looking for the joys and trying to find the joys, and we had found a warehouse that was selling them in Hong Kong Cologne. Okay. Hong Kong Cologne. They they selling the joys for uh twenty dollars a pair. <laughs> wookie wookie. Yeah. And we had like we had two thousand pair. Me and my partner had Stored where? In in Hong Kong. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We had ordered them online. We had went the whole route to getting the uh plane ticket to, to Hong Kong, a 21 hour trip. Oh, y'all Frank Lucas. We were serious. Like, <laughs> y'all Frank Lucas. We're gonna the go game. get it. The name of our store was called uh Jay Walkers. Oh, oh yeah, better was, be some J's. You, you get what okay. I'm saying? Okay. They weren't joys, they was J's. You get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we Smart. got Jay Walkers. So we we trying to figure out how we gonna pay to get a uh we had to get a capsule, a parcel to, to uh shipped the 2,000 pair of Jordans back in. And it was going to be well over how much we done already spent. We spent 20 bands on 2,000 pairs of shoes. Jeez. You get what I'm saying? This smart hustle. This smart hustle. So what we doing is we trying to make sure we get all these shoes back. And uh, I ain't got my money. Yeah. <laughs> my partner and all them, everybody got their money and shit me, right? So I'm talking to my brother. My brother go to UT in Austin. The one right up under me, he the... He the uh, Straight and narrow. One. It's always like, the middle child that yeah, the be, second child like always be straight. He and looked narrow. at every fuck up an I did ever yeah. done, and I'm gonna do something else. And he did it a whole totally different way and came out better. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I call him sometimes. That's my big brother. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Yeah. So he in, he in UT, and I'm telling him like, yeah, man, I'm trying to get some money, man. We gotta shoot these shoes back to uh to America to the to the states in a capsule, and it costs more money than it costs to buy the shoes. And he was like, man, uh, I like, man, turn me on to somebody out there. I'm looking for a lick. It's September. And in September, it, it, it turned into a uh, drought season for, for weed. Like, it'd be hard to get a I pound of weed. Well, back then when it was, just, say, when it was Reggie. We, we were selling the shit out of Reggie back then, big pounds. Yeah. So it's a drought. And my brother like, dude, dude, dude got it. Dude out here got it. And I'm like, all right, bet. I'm going to buy it. And then I'm going to turn around, come back and jack the money back. Get it back. I know I just took the money in there. So I'm going to turn around and get the money back. That's how we're going to pay for these, these shoes to get back. So how we get down there is my, my partner, big man, he come to our trap house on South Hughes. And he trying to sell his Dayton's off of his cutlass to my partner, DK. And I'm like, no, nah, don't sell your dates. Just take me to take me to Austin. Like, take me to Austin, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pay you eight hundred for taking me down there, cause I already know what I'm about to do. So he like bet. So we shoot down here to uh, Austin, and the sad part about it is, Twisted Black had just came home the first time. Yeah. Right. Twisted Black come home, and he got this gospel album. And big man playing the gospel. I'm like, yeah, this Twisted Black, he just got, I'm like, I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear nobody rapping about God. Like, man, you know what we about to go do? So this one I like, denounce God over my life. I tell big man, man, nigga, God ain't, ain't got, don't got no control over my life. And the devil don't either. I'm running this shit. And I was serious. 
So we on our way to Austin, and you know, in Austin, they, overnight, they stay on the, the laws stay on the highway with their lights on. So we go on to Austin, and we seeing law after law after law. We stop at Tiger Mart when we get to Austin, and I'm so smart and so intuitive that I'm like, we ain't going tonight. We ain't hitting the lick tonight because we didn't seen too many laws. So we finna go to the house. So we get out the car, and mind you that this cutlass that we in is flipped. That was big man known for, he, he known for flipping cutlass regals and all that. And they do it so good that after all this happened, his mama got the car back from the pound. So wow. we at the Tiger Mart and we looking under the hood. It's, 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 it's quiet, it ain't hot, it ain't heated. And as soon as we leave, my brother get pulled over by the law. And he, he, he only got pulled over because his lights wasn't on. Dude told him to turn on his lights. Do it. So I'm like, man, we ain't doing nothing tonight. Gotta do it. Get to my brother's spot, showing him all the money that we got. We finna go get this weed in the morning. Get to the house. That next morning, we knock on the door. Don't nobody open the door. So my partner, big man, like, bro, you know how we do this. We finna kick this door in. Now, the, the rule that we got amongst ourselves is when you kick the door, you only kick it one time. And it got to come open. Because the commotion gonna cause somebody to come. So you gotta know that when you kick this door, you kicking it one time to come open. And in my mind, I really don't wanna do this. I'm trying to, you know, really fight doing this. I really don't wanna do this. We on Slaughter Lane in Austin, Texas. I'm trying to paint the picture too. We have four flights. It's a, it's a hell of an apartment complex. We had to get uh, buzzed in. I seen the security guard at the door. I mean, at the gate. It's all bad. Huh? It's just starting off bad, but go ahead. It started off bad, but, you know, we not scary. We we understand, like, this just it's every day. Yeah, this just every day. They don't know what we got going on. This just every day. So we get in there, and uh, we go upstairs. We knock on the door, and I'm looking at this complex like, this. they got some money. Uh, dude don't open the door, so I'm kind of, like, hesitant on kicking his door. But... This is my first time kicking the dope. I'm going to try it. I read back in my mind. I'm like, you ain't going to kick this door open. The door come right open. Uh, as soon as I kick the door, the door come right, right open. And it's a white boy like, what, 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 bro? Like, we ain't got nothing. It's gone. It's gone. So immediately, my partner, big man, got the strap. So we, we rushing him around the house and through the house into the room. And we go in the room, a white girl naked. Oh, whoa, She's whoa. screaming like, please don't rape me. Hey, bitch, shut up. We ain't finna rape, bitch. I don't want to touch you. Here, go sit your ass down in this living room and don't, don't get up. You get what I'm saying? So she's sitting there. We didn't, coming in the house, because he was right there, We he caught in tracks. We passed the room and didn't check this one room. And it was an essay in that room, scared shitless, because he had just sold his gun. Well, took gave his gun and his money to his girl to take home that night. So it's no weed, it's no money. It was like nine ounces of uh, cocaine in the SA room. Go back in and I'm trying to like calm everybody down. He like, I called the police, bro. Like, man, you ain't called no police to no trap house, bro. You, what, what type of fool you think I am? Y'all just sit down and I'm showing them my money in my duffel bag. Like, I'm gonna take care of your door. We gonna fix the refrigerator. We flipped the whole house. You know what I'm saying? Knocked everything Look. over everything. So I'm like, we gonna take care of everything, man. Just show us where the weed at. By this time, the police didn't come in the door. Like freeze, freeze, freeze. And when he do all that, my pot, the big man, he run in the room. I'm looking at him. They can't see him. He run in the room. When he run in the room, he clean the gun off and put it under the mattress. Open up the window and jump out. Oh wow. Oh, wow. We up four flights. We up four stories. He, gone. he opened Superman. up a window and jump out. So I'm like, I gotta follow suit. So I run, I look down, this nigga caught by the the laws got him at the bottom. Four, <laughs> four flights. Four flights he got caught. Oh no. So I'm like, I turn around and the police that's in the house, Robert Bohannon. That's his name, Officer Robert Bohannon. I'm looking for him, you know, to apologize. Yeah. I know I kind of, you know, fucked him up. But uh <laughs> nah for real. Yeah, like, mentally you like, like, like we gotta understand, like, man, you gotta take accountability for the shit you do. 
Yeah. Like the reason I got shot by the police is because I couldn't respond to authority correctly. Mm. Not because I'm black that he shot me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do what I was asked to do. You, you didn't know to do it, or you didn't. I'm not doing it. You oh, get what I'm not saying? Oh, like, oh, fuck him. What you happened? get what I'm saying? Wait, in prison, you was like, I know how to get out of prison. But I'm but saying when you get in that mind frame of you doing what you want to do. Oh, you like I didn't already went there. I can kick this door open already. You get what I'm saying? I'm in here now. Man. And it's like now we at the end. I'm I'm I ain't going back to prison in my mind. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So he tell me to freeze. And I, I'm like, bro, I'm I'm leaving. I ain't did nothing. Like, bro, I got money, I got ten thousand dollars on me. I'm leaving. And I took one step forward and pop. I step back and I moved my duffel bag. And it was a bullet hole in my shorts with blood coming out. And I just rocked the law. I rocked him. As soon as I rocked him, his gun fell out. And when his gun fell out, I dove on the gun. The SA who called the law dove on a fumble, another fumble. You know what I'm saying? The SA dive on my back trying to get the gun. I sit in the trap all day dropping the clip. Dropping the clip. We play with guns all day, drop the clip. But I was really in fear of my life because I done got shot. And I'm emptying the whole clip and the, shooting the bullets out, the SA on my back, the police on my back. And as soon as I get through uh, emptying the clip, they both raise up off of me and I just run out the front door. When I run out the front door, I'm running down the stairs. We up four flights. I'm running down the stairs. As soon as I get to the bottom, one loud, like, he like my same height too. So we kind of eye level. And he say, uh, I'm going to count to 10. No, he said, I'm going to count to three. And if you don't stop, if you don't get down, we shooting to kill. And I immediately got on my knees. He came, he hit my pockets. I had an ounce of uh, Dro. That's when Dro was back. Back then, the ounce of Dro, Afghan, that good red hair. And I probably had a pocket about $1,200. They took all that and they took my duffel bag. And then they put me in the ambulance. And I can just remember the pain hit as soon as they put me in the ambulance. You I'm didn't like, feel it on the way down I the four flights. None of that. Yeah, you... The first feeling I felt was. After that, you just on go. I ain't, I'm on go. I'm trying to not die. You get what I'm saying? So I done ran down the stairs. I done got, I done got uh, uh, detained by the law and they got me in the back of the ambulance, right? So they taking me to the, amb to the emergency room. When I get to the emergency room, the uh, nurses, they playing with me. I'm like, hey, y'all, what y'all doing? They like, they putting the catheter in me. And I'm like, what if I got a piss? They hold up my, my catheter bag like, you peeing. That's what the whole catheter for. They like to check and see if you got blood in your urinary tract. That's anybody who gets shot, they got to get the catheter to make sure there's no blood in your urine. Because if it's blood in your urine, you, you done, basically. Mm. You're done? Yeah, you done. If you pissing blood, you done. I didn't know that. I yeah. Know that. So that's why that's the first thing they do. Yeah, okay. President or whoever you get shot, you got to get the character. That's the worst pain. Yeah, I don't want to think. And, and, I don't want to think about. Oh my god, I don't want to think about it. So then after that, they 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 put me. I'm handcuffed still. Got an officer with me. They took me to the uh, cat scan. They put me in the cat scan. I got shot right in the pelvic area, and it was like all I could see was like a a a, a trail, like sticking up from my skin, like a trail where the bullet went. And uh, pulled me out the CAT scan, said it wasn't nothing broke, wasn't nothing fractured. And they found the bullet in my nuts. Oh, God. That, that, oh, God. Oh, damn. That's where the bullet stopped. And they like, dumb found it like, bro, that's the thinnest tissue in his body. Like, how that didn't blow his nuts off? Yeah. You, see, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And they take it out? No, because I don't. that's what they asked me. The, the doctor come in and he like, you don't have to get it taken out. Uh, uh, it's, it's lodged in there. It, it's, it's not moving. It's not going to hurt you. Uh, we recommend that you, you, you don't touch it. Anything that the body don't want is going to push it. It's going to release it on, on its own. Right. So, man, this shit's so long, man. It's crazy. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> soon as the officer, we get we get through. He like, I got to go and take you down to the, they, they want you at the detective's office, the interrogation room. Going to the interrogation room. 
And I'm walking and everything. Like, ain't shit happened wow. three hours ago. I'm on the news. Yeah, you walking. Oh, man. I'm on Texas news. It's fucking me up. Wow. So uh, the detective get me in his in his interrogation room. And he like, you know why you want a big old white dude? I, I want to I wanna call him. He look like the dude on Cheers, big old white dude with the <laughs> curly hair. Shut up, John Cooper. Yeah, got the tie on and everything. He, uh, you know why you, uh, you know why you ain't dead? You know why you ain't paralyzed? And he just took my duffel bag and started dumping all my money out. It's a fucking bullet hole in every dollar bill. Wow. Save and I'm looking dollar. at the money, and I see the bullet hole like the 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 fire in the dollar bill hole. Like the bullet really went through this money. Yeah. And slowed it down enough to stop in the nigga nuts. Damn. That's some wow. So right then and there is really when I really made my decision. Like, God, I know you saved my life for a reason. I got you. So I made a, a, a mental, like, you know, consciousness of like what I got to do. But I knew I had to go to prison. You see what I'm saying? So is the bullet cylinder? So it, it stayed in there for 14, 14 years. Damn. 14 years. So how it come out? I'm, 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 this is, this shit crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. No. How, say what now? I think you should tell them how long you was in prison. Okay, so I get uh, 32 years and all. I get uh, 15 years for burglary of a habitation. I get 15 years for, uh, for uh, deadly conduct on a police officer and uh, like nine other uh, people that was in the area. And then I got taken and attempted to take a weapon from a police officer. I got that, I got two years for that. So what my lawyer did, he got 32 years ran concurrent with the 15 year sentence. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So I had 15, 15, two, and instead of doing them uh, sentence by sentence, they ran it all concurrent. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, by them running it off concurrent, I came up and like, I had some type of thing where mine wasn't aggravated. My case wasn't aggravated. Bless us. Because I never had a gun. Bless us. That's real. You, you get what I'm saying? I never no. had a gun. The only gun I had was a police's gun. And he's not supposed to lose control of his yeah, gun. He fumbled it. Yeah, he fumbled it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So... I got got 32 years for that. Got 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 it to like a 15 year sentence where you ain't even got to worry about the 32. And uh, went down there and it, it like prison is. I threw a white boy off of two uh, rows. We 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 gonna, we gonna touch on the prison stuff, but you <laughs> no wait before the 14 years you said it came out. Yeah. How so man, um, I'm 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 shacking with my girl. Right, we together. Oh, we together for like six years and. You know, everything I've been trying to do on my own, it just ain't really working. Like I didn't I didn't did a lot of things out here. I ain't never had a job. Like I've always had some. I had a tattoo shop when I first came home this second time. And uh just working all this different type of stuff, it just wasn't working for me like I wanted it to. So I started getting this this feeling like I think I'm like 33. I started getting this feeling like I gotta start seeking God more. I gotta start serving God better. So I start having that hang over me. And uh, I start telling my girl, like, I'm about to change. I'm about to do this. I'm about to do that. And she's like, nigga, on, on. you about to rob the church. Yeah. You, 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 you about to scam the church. You about to start, start, start doing this and start doing that. And I start seeing like, dang, I can't take this girl with me. You get what I'm saying? Like, she can't, she can't even understand what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She don't even see it. So, we, I got so many uh, draws and, and, and wife beaters because the shit went stale. She stopped washing the nigga clothes and stopped cooking and shit. So I'm like, we, we in this house ain't doing shit but head button. And uh, long story short, my bullet start coming out. And I'm like, dang, my bullet coming out. And she like, Man, you better go to the emergency room, get that taken out. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not taking this out. So she made me go to my grandmother's house. 
Go to my grandmother's house. My grandmother say, just go to the emergency room to get antibiotics so it don't get infected. And I seen one of my cellies, his bullet came out his ankle. Yeah. And it come out like a like a blackhead or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we've seen it. It just come out. And that's how I was looking down there, like it's trying to come out. I'm like, damn. And I don't really want them to cut nothing. Yeah. Like you, you not finna cut nothing down there. Yeah. And, and the uh, doctor that came in the emergency room, he was like, yeah, we just gonna give you some antibodies. Make sure you keep it clean. It's gonna come out on its own. So cool. But this whole time, I'm celibate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm celibate. And as I'm celibate, I start seeing shit that I wouldn't see if I wasn't celibate. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. And that's crazy. So I, 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 I found my wife through my bullet coming out of my nuts. Damn. I was, I was made celibate. On, on on purpose or accident or however you it wasn't it wasn't my doing yeah, that made it wasn't me your celibate. choice. It wasn't my choice. It wasn't my choice. Wow. And the crazy part about it is it's a wilderness that you in. And I know how to go back into understanding the wilderness that Jesus was in. And when the when when the serpent or whoever, Satan or whatever was tempting him. You also get tempted. Mm. That's why. And we don't see it. You get what I'm saying? And I'm looking at this girl like, dang, that's my wife right there. That's my wife right there and just playing a whole bunch of games and playing a whole bunch of games and playing a whole bunch of games and <laughs> bullet drop out. Bullet drop out in the bathtub one day. Did you keep it as a safe keep? My dumb ass uh, showed my parole officer and she took it from me. Oh, oh, she got it. Yeah, she got it. Yeah, she put it on the wall. Yeah. Damn. Damn. And one of the one of the one of the dudes in the house got my uh I had on some uh Charles Barkley 34s. The the navy blue yeah, ones. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, on yeah. The, on, the, on the toe. I know what you're talking about. And as I was leaving out running out the house, he got my shoe. It's on his mama's mantle. Oh wow. I, I want that back. Yeah, man, you better go. Uh, I really want my shoe back. You better though. go OJ Simpson a game. And, so uh, <laughs> keep this game though. How do I know this shit? How do I know the SA gave his money to his girl that night? Gave the gun to his girl that night? Hell yeah. Texas put him in my cell. Oh wow, that's wow. So I've been in prison now. I've been in prison uh, four years. And I didn't get two two year set offs. You know what I'm saying? I go up for parole, they give me a two year set off. Went up again two years later, they give you a two year set off. So I'm living penitentiary life now. You know what I'm saying? And uh, one day, I, 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 you know, when you when you get a new silly or one silly leave, it's it's your your job to make sure whoever come in know the standard. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So. Before I leave, leave the house, before I leave my cell, I'm gonna make sure I get it how I want it to look. So when the new dude come in, he know, hey man, this a clean silly. This a clean cell, this how we do things. And that's just what it is. I come back home from work and I see I got a new silly. And I look at him, I'm like, damn, what's up silly? You my silly like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell me the how, just tell me that the cell rules. The first time you tell, First time anybody tell you, tell them to sell rules, they a hoe. Because mm. they just, they asking for the rules. I ain't going to no cell with no rules. Yeah, you, you, right. Yeah, I'm not going to no, make you the ain't, rules. You ain't, I ain't not even that. Not even that. Because cause, cause I don't want to paint myself as no, 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 you know, no, no, no big bully or nothing like that. But no it's going to be mutual. Mm. Like when I come in here, I'm a, I'm a man. You're not finna rule me to do nothing. But he asked for the rules. So I told him, like, hey, when I'm in the cell, you ain't in the cell. Uh, uh, you know, just give me the rules. Uh, it's, it's when you pissing, make sure you flush that toilet. I'm talking about I do not want to hear your piss touch the water at all. Keep I, you, you don't got to worry about waking me up by pushing this uh, flush. I do not want to hear your piss. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And when you shit, put up the blanket. Put up the... Uh, the uh, the tent. Yeah. 
So we running all these rules down and I'm looking at him and say, man, you look familiar. He say, uh, I've been on the unit four years. I used to work in commissary. So I put it out of my mind that I know him from commissary. Going to commissary every, every week or every month or whatever. That's where I know you from. It been about a week and uh, late night rat come. And I, you know, I cut hair. So I cut hair in prison. I was doing everything to make money. Uh, drawing uh, uh, portraits and pictures and all that to send to different people and just making money that type of way. The hustle don't never stop. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm cutting hair and that's one of my hustles. And you know, they do in and outs. In and out is like where you allowed to go in your cell, you get what you need and you come back out. Like say friends, you gotta go to the showers. You go in there and get your shower supplies and then you go take your shower on the next in and out. So it's an in and out. And I'm going in there to get my shower stuff because I'm about to take a shower. I got a typewriter. I wrote a book while I was in prison called Tattoo Tears of Gangsters Crop. Uh, Barnes and Nobles, Borders and all that. So I'm typing my, my book in there. I'm like, I'm going to type tonight. I ain't cutting no hair tonight. I'm going to type tonight. So silly, I'm about to go take a shower. So if you want to stay in the house, go on, get your time in while I'm in the shower. After the shower, I'm, I'm in the house all night through rate, late night rap. You get what I'm saying? So he like, cool. So we get in there and we talking, just like regularly. Next thing you know, when I'm leaving out the cell for the in and out, one of my homeboys from ATX come up to the cell, he like, you cutting hair tonight? And I'm like, nah, I ain't cutting hair, I'm coming back in the house. So when my celly stepped to the door, my partner say, what's up ATX? And they hit the ATX and then it hit me. You, Roberto Lopez. I push him back in the house. We go back in the house. I shut the door. I, he sit on, the, on, his, on his bunk. I sit on the toilet. I'm like, I'm Shane Gregory. <gasps> yeah, I'm Shane Gregory, bro. You the one who called the law that night, this, that, and the next, in the house that night. Wow. He the one who called the police in the room that I missed. Yeah. So I'm trying to think fast because I'm scared to death too. Yeah. You know why? I'm scared because he killed the white boy. That's what he and he got a 25 year sentence for killing the white boy. Oh, so you knew that already as far as I knew he was in there for murder. Yeah. But I didn't know for who. Damn. So we in here sitting. I like you, Robert Lopez. You didn't you didn't uh, you you the reason I'm here. He like, man, it was a lot going on that night, man. Let me run it down to you, bro. He like, man, the white boy, he always set me up. This is a Hispanic dude, but he, his family is very privileged. So he worked for a cartel that got car lot dealerships, not car lots, Ford dealerships, Honda dealerships. They the cartel. And he got it plentiful, but he's not like out the mud essay. He a clean cut essay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So the cartel on his ass like, Damn, you didn't let this white boy rob you 10 times and you pay it off. This the stories he telling me. He like, the, every time he robbed me, I just hustle harder and pay it off. But this time when y'all did it and I and I put big man in it like, yeah, big man and um, the white boy, because I'm trying to run gang too, because he a murderer. Right. I got to sleep with this nigga. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm spooked, like, I, I'm, I'm in here with this nigga that might kill me, man. So I'm telling him, like, yeah, man, big man, you seen the money I had, right? You see all the money I had, right? So I'm trying to plead my case, like, like, look, man, I came to this to buy, not to rob. I came here to buy, bro. And he was like, yeah, man, they set me up all the time. I like, yeah, it had to be big man and, and chance, man. They put this together, man. And they put all this in this shit, man. And we, you know, I ain't the same person no more, bro. That ain't me. Like, that's how I'm, try, I'm trying to finesse the shit out of. Like, yeah, man, that ain't me, because I'm really scared. Mm. Like, yeah, man, that ain't me. So we ain't going nowhere tonight. We're going to stay in here tonight, and we're going to figure this out. I won't let him out the cell. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm trying to do, you, you, ain't, you ain't finna shank nobody tonight or none of that. So we riding it out, and uh, as we riding it out, I figure out how he killed him. He killed him, he said, Man, I was just going in the in the in the in his house 
he had one of them bats from Six Flags, you know, the little bats. Yeah. He said, man, I'm just going to go in there and just beat him up with this bat and 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 just call it a night. Because, you know, they, they walk in each other's houses like it ain't nothing. They friends. He said he walked in the white boy house. The white boy was sleeping in the living room on the couch. And he just started hitting him with the uh, the the uh, bat and blanked out and beat him to death. Wow. Beat him to death. 25 years. So he spazzed out, tried to go to Mexico type shit, ended up getting caught. His family well off. They gave him 25 years, right? So we get all this whole information out that night in the cell. And it dawned on me. This is a trick. The only thing I can get more time for in prison is retaliation. Yeah. So if we fight or if I do anything with this dude, I get a retaliation. That's a free world case. That means I got to go to court in that county yes. and receive more time Yeah. if I fight him. You get what I'm saying? So as the day is going, I got Tango Blast. Like that's a that's a known like gang in prison. Tango Blast come to me. The OGs, they like, uh, hey man, we need to holler at you. And I, I go hollering at them and they like, man, uh, SA been on our uh on our farm for four years, man, and he said he was solo. Now all of a sudden he yo selling and he trying to blast. <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't know what's going on, but I know now he trying to get protection. You get what I'm saying? So I had to tell all the Crips and Bloods, what's going on? I got to let them know, like, hey, man, he on my indictment. He called the police. Uh, he's scared that I'm going to do something to him. So we got we to gotta watch what's up with these essays. Long story short, he ended up uh, catching out. He went to, uh, it's called Lime Building. You go to Lime Building and you tell them you're not going back to your cell. Like, I'm scared for my life. And he got up off the unit. As soon as he got off the unit, I seen parole the next week and made parole. 